And welcome back to another college basketball podcast with your boy Will Dickinson, CBB Talk. And I was going to be playing this this audio. I don't know if you can hear this. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm playing the March Mass theme song because guess what, everybody? It's March. We here. It's time to get down to the business. We're in March. We're less than a month away from the. We're only two two weeks away from the tournament. I think in two weeks from today, the first day of Mar- two weeks from tomorrow, the March Madness will be starting. Pretty sure it will start on the sixteenth. So get ready, everyone, or the fifteenth. It might start on the fifteenth. I think it is the fifteenth. Anyways, big day. Um. Time to talk some college basketball because guess what? It's March. We got to get serious. We got to, you know, this is when time starts ramping up. Um, The first few days had a lot of good games. Not a lot of crazy results. We had really just two ranked teams fall. Three ranked teams of mine fell. And um, I think it was two in the AP poll. Let's start off with San Diego State. It fell at Boise State last night. to And that uh, was a big win for the bo- the uh oh god for Boise State for the Broncos they get the job done a court storm there in Boise and it was a great to see you know a big win there from the Broncos they got the job done you know San Diego State I still think it's the best team in this conference but that was a big win for just the whole Mountain West conference as a whole as a whole because that po- put Boise State back in the tournament. And it was a big game for Max Rice, had 26 in this one. And San Diego State didn't get any real consistent score. Bradley had 16 points, but the rest of the, no one else scored double digits that started for San Diego State, and they'll fall there. I dropped San Diego State the 15th in my rankings. They were at 12. They fell three spots there. Boise State, you know, you're not going to be in my rankings, but you could. I think that puts you on the right side of the bubble. And get one more win, and I think you will be in the NCAA tournament for the second straight year. So good job there by Coach Rice there and his son. Give a great performance for the Broncos to get a win at San Diego State. The other right team to fall was the Indiana Hoosiers. Coming off a win at Purdue, at your rivals. Coming off a season sweep, and then you like a goose egg and lose by 22 to Iowa. Iowa, now big two wins in a row here. And they get this one on the road. Keegan Murray, 23. Not Keegan. Oh, my gosh. Call him Keegan Murray. Chris Murray, 26 points. A left-handed Keegan, I might say. They're twin brothers, so I guess that's not a crazy thing to say. Tony Perrin said 23. And it was the non-white people getting the job done for Iowa because guess what? That is, Iowa is a very white school. Um, Pan Sam Samford's had these really two good games recently. He's a great three point shooter. I had five threes in this one, sixteen total points there. And Iowa, you know, you're in my you're in my honorable mentions to being ranked. You're getting there. They will be in the tournament this year. Indiana, that's that's just a weird loss for the Hoosiers. You know, coming off you know a big win earlier this week and then lose this one or a big one on Saturday, then losing this one. You know, you don't want to see it. I dropped them down to 18th in my rankings, which I think is respectable. Uh, they were at 15 before, went down three spots again. And then also Nevada lost to Wyoming, I'm pretty sure, on Monday. And that put Duke, like uh, the, the Blue Devils, are undefeated at home under the first year of Shire. They get the job done undefeated Cameron. They beat NC State in a really good game. Jeremy Roach, you know, led them to in that game. DJ Burns is really good. Terquavion Smith struggles, and it was Jarko Joyner and DJ Burns really doing everything everything for NC State. And it's weird. Duke really hit, I think, four threes in this one. Shot 20% from three. Turned the ball over more, than, but got to the line and played good Duke basketball and had a good team performance, and their defense was very solid against a very tough tournament NC State team. State drops two in a row. I think they're still they're still gonna be a tournament team. I mean, they're gonna be around that eight, nine seed, ten seed, I think, for NC State. And I think Duke's a sleeper team. They might be just a little bit under the radar the way they're playing right now. I got them above a Kentucky team. They went through a lot of injuries earlier in the year. And now that they're back healthy, they're playing at a level 
where they can make a run this NCAA tournament. Jeremy Munch is that experience. The freshman, finally. Mark Mitchell's serving more on the offensive end with Lively as well. Flip Kelsey's always been doing his thing. Getting Dariq Whitehead back healthy is huge. Duke can make a run this NCAA tournament. It's not like the other Duke teams where they have one big dominant player, but they can go through a lot of different guys. And a good win for Duke. And now they're, they're fourth in my ACC power rankings right now. Going in with one more game left against your rival. If you can pull off a season sweep against Carolina, you go red hot into the AC tournament. I wouldn't be surprised um, if they could go and win the tournament. Because right now, I don't think there's a, an overwhelming favorite in the ACC tournament. I, I There isn't. I mean, is it Miami? Is it Virginia? Virginia got the win against Clemson. Wasn't pretty, but they scored over 60 points, which helped them win. Good defense from Carolina. Clemson made a little bit of a run that second half. It was just a good team performance all around from the Cavaliers. McNeely had 12. He finally shot the ball better in this one. Ryan Dunn had 10. So the freshmen both had 10 off the bench there. And 12 from Mer- uh, Gardner and 12 from Franklin. Team performance there. Kia Clark, 5 points, 6 assists. But the free throw shooting it will be the problem for Virginia. They're just not a good shooting team from the line. And that's concerning when you get into games where it will be close and you got to make free throws. You know, that 2019 Virginia team wasn't a great free throw shooting team. But they made it when it mattered and they had clutch players. Virginia doesn't have a guy that I can trust on the stretch, which I think will hurt them when it comes to, I would not march anymore because it is March when it comes to tournament play as they get one more regular season game against Louisville, going to win that one, hopefully get that one seed or two seed in the, uh, in the ACC tournament. I need water. My mouth, my my throat is killing me. BCU wins the A-10 outright. Shout out to the Rams. Uh, I'm, as a guy from Virginia who won their, one of my first March Madness mem- mem- uh, memories um, from my childhood, something the first thing I kind of remember where I kind of fell in love with the tournament was I was super young, maybe six, seven years old, but I still remember to this day VCU under Shaka Smart making the Final Four. I really don't remember who was on the team, I'm going to be honest, but I just remember that. I remember seeing VCU make those magical run there. I remember my parents talking about them because it's a small, it's a smaller school in Richmond, Virginia, and it was cool to see him make a run. Of course, they've had other good runs. And they, I remember having them having, you know, Mo Alley Cox on that team. So VCU, great team there. If they lose a a ten tournament though, will they make it? Will they make it? It's tough to say. A tens having a down year. Usual multi bid league this year. It's looking like a one big league. League. Sad news for Tennessee, you beat Arkansas by 20, almost 20, so that's not sad, but you lost to Kai Ziegler for the year. Last night, he goes down with a knee injury, wasn't sure. Today, it's confirmed that he tore his ACL and will be up for the year, and this hurts Tennessee. I was not a big believer in the volunteers going into the tournament anyways, but when you lose maybe your best on-ball defender, your point guard, big shot maker and taker, well, I think this is going to hurt the team. Of course, you the defensive end it hurts the most. He's a great defender. He's a hound guy, but then losing um, you know his offensive game too. Your point guard it hurts. Tennessee's gonna have to have bigger uh, moments from Tyreek Key and Vesky's gonna have to play a lot more minutes in this one. Three minutes into the game, a torn ACL. It's sad to see a season end right as before you're getting in the conference play. And you know Tyreek Key also didn't even play in this this game, and neither did. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting distracted. Anyways, Julian Phillips did play in this one finally. So if they can get Tyree Key back healthy, get Julian Phillips, you know, back into a starter role, that'd be huge. Cause you didn't, you you didn't, you got Josiah Joy James back too. So they're figuring out rotations there. So they're getting, they were back, starting to get more healthy, and then you lose your starter for the rest of the year which, you know, that's going to hurt them. They moved up to 16th in my rankings, but I, I do not know if I am buying the long-term value in this Tennessee Volunteers team, you know, going into the SEC tournament and the a- and the NCAA tournament. Kansas wins another Big 12, at least gets a share of the Big 12 title, 17, 20 years, absolutely insane from Bill Self and company. He's done an amazing job there. 
I mean, they were already a blue blood, but Kansas might be the best program, you know, in these last couple decades, just doing what they've done in one of the best conferences in America. And this year, probably the best. They got a run from a tough Texas Tech team, but Kansas did it in the all reds. It threw me off. I turned on the game and I'm like, wait, what what? I thought I thought it was Texas Tech, and now I'm looking like Jalen Wilson's wearing red. You know, I, I, I'm not, I didn't mind it. It was just a little strange. Kansas has brought out a lot of different uniforms. I think on Saturday they were wearing multicolor uniforms and then they were wearing red um, last night. So it was a little, it threw me off. I'm not going to lie. It did throw me off. Kansas wins, uh, gets a share of the Big East title at least. They go play Texas on the road on Saturday. And if they win that, they win outright. If Texas wins their next two games, they'll get a share. Texas does play at TCU. We'll talk about that game in a little bit. So good game today. Jalen Wilson was going through a little cold streak. He um turns it back up there at 20 in this one. Grady Dick struggles. But luckily, they didn't need his presence as much in this game. It was kind of an opposite, though. Kansas had a good start, finish, uh, didn't have a great second half. The opposite of what they usually do. But I still think Kansas, you know, even when grade, if grade they can play at full potential, they can be, they can and would beat most teams in the country. Of course, conference tournament started. The A Sun had a couple exciting games there. You know, Bellman had a game winner on Monday, and then Tuesday night had um they had two at the they had their second round of the tournament, and we had almost number one seed um fall, which was Kennesaw State. They survive. I watched the end of that game. It was an exciting one. Liberty, I think, is that team that's going to win the tournament this year. Um, McGee had 29 this one. He's such a good uh, scoring guard. Had And beats Bellman by 20. I think it will be a uh, Liberty cha- I think Liberty will win and move on to the championship. The Patriot League also started with, you know, American and Loyola. Uh, Mary, Loyola, Maryland getting wins there. Antoine Davis in their first game. Needed a win if they he wanted to break the record, and he gets 38 in this one. So he is now 26 points away from breaking Pete Maravich's record from most points in a college career. So we'll see if he can do it in potentially their last game. I'm not totally sure who they play or if they. I don't think they play tonight. But again, we'll see if they can do it there on the ACC tournament. Libscum. Um, and Stenson's season in Eastern Kentucky ends North Alabama. So going into the semifinals of that one, I believe it will be Lipscomb versus Kennesaw State in Eastern Kentucky against Liberty. So let's go look at these games for Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to have more conference tournaments start, as in the Big South tournament, Northeast tournament. Those are two um, conferences that are, if I think if Furman's, Furman's the favorite in the Big South, I believe I'm actually not sure who's the favorite in the big in the Northeast Conference, but we got a lot of good games today. Xavier Providence at six thirty. Those six thirty Big East times on FS1. Those are always great games there. And Providence, you know, both these both these teams, you know, have been hot and cold there. Xavier's been more cold than hot recently. Providence has been steady. And at home, I expect Providence to win this game. I don't know. I don't think Zach Fremantle is back for Xavier, which will definitely hurt their chances of winning this game. I do like the Friars to win this one. I think they're a sleeper going into the tournament. I got a lot of people seeing their eight seeds, and if they get an eight seed in this tournament, I could see them, you know, potentially being a one seed to get to the Sweet Sixteen. And same with Xavier, of course. I think they're a higher seed. They have better wins, and they've gone through a cold stretch without one of their best players. But I still think they can get to that next level. Maryland is playing Ohio State, and look what I'm wearing today. It's not the shirt today; it's the shorts. Got some Maryland basketball shorts. These are so fire. I love Maryland's colors. My mom is from Baltimore, so um. I've been to Baltimore, Maryland. I know they don't play in Maryland. I know they play in college. Uh, Bo- they, I know they don't play in Baltimore. They play in College Park. But um, shout out to Maryland there. They play at Ohio State. Should be a win. Ohio State's coming off a win, so who knows? Maybe they're back to being hot. They're only a uh, one point underdog, so we'll see there. Maryland, you know, not a great team on the road. Great team at home. We'll see if they can get a road win to you know as their last couple games come down the regular season. Kansas hopes Kansas State. Hope- Host Oklahoma should be a win for Kansas State. A good one. Big Ten game is Penn State at Northwestern there. Penn State more in the bubble. Northwestern is going to be in the tournament, but don't want to keep losing games and falling down seed lines with these losses. 
the best game of the day is Texas at TCU. Texas needs to win to, you know, get a chance to win the Big East, uh, not the Big 12 regular season, or at least get a share of it with Kansas. TCU plays has been playing better with Mike Miles in there. This is a top 25 showdown in the AP poll. And in mine, I have TCU. I have Texas A and TCU at 21, and that's one spot higher than for each team than the AP poll. This is going to be a really good matchup. Mike Miles, Marcus Carr, Tyrese Hunter, great guard play, Damon Ball. The big man, we'll see if Eddie Lampkin can go in this one. I expect. I think TCU is going to get it done at home. But if Texas gets this win, that's a huge win. They're going to have a lot of momentum going into this game at Can- or at home against Kansas there. And, on, and then on Thursday, we got the Sun Belt kind of continuing. Oh, Sun Belt started last night as well, so the Sun Belt will continue into the tournament. Missouri Valley Conference will start. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and the Patriot League will as well. So at the semifinals of the A Sun will happen. We got some good Big Ten games, Michigan, Illinois. Illinois will be, I'm assuming, will be in the tournament. Michigan, you know, is fighting the game in this bubble. They've been playing really good recently. If they can get a road win against Illinois, that would speak a lot for them to sneak into this tournament there after you know, not having a good start to the year. Arizona State plays at UCLA. I think a win here for Arizona State would kind of just, I think that would put them in the tournament firmly. UCLA has already won the Big 12 title, and I, they're, I expect them to win. They're actually 13 points. Uh, favorites at home, which is I feel like is a lot for Arizona State team who's fighting to make the tournament. And the West Coast Conference Tournament will also start on Thursday. So we got a lot of conference tournaments on Thursday. Not a lot of games. And then Arizona goes at USC, so that's a good game. USC, get this win. I think you'll be in the tournament for sure. So that's a big game. Big game for USC, honestly, at home. needs Need to win that one. And yeah, that's really it. It's March. Wake up. Get ready. Because guess what? It's about to go down. Tournament bids will be getting um cemented this weekend. So that's always exciting. Conference tournaments have started up and the power conferences start next week. This is the best time of the year. Thanks for watching, guys. And guess what? It's March, baby.